are watching this, I'm already dead. Even so many years after Chris McMacklin's alleged murder at the hands of the backstage stabber, his body has never been recovered. So how exactly did McMacklin disappear? When Chris first disappeared, we didn't think anything was wrong. We thought it was another one of his classic Chris schemes. He would con old people to pay for the theater company. You need my social security number? Yeah, yeah, we need that too for the uh, theater company. Back when Chris disappeared, you understand, we didn't want anything to do with the cops. I love the police. The boys in blue. I always supported them, and I still do, with my legislature. You know, I'm more than just the guy who passed the fried chicken bill. Fine bird, a friend of farmers everywhere. After Brad said to me that Chris was gone and never coming back, I figured I should report him missing. When the cops showed up at our place, it's when I knew we were caught. But they didn't even find the drugs or the guns. When the police entered Bradley's room, they saw blood ah! all over the place. Windows, ceilings, floors. All of that blood should have been inside my brother's body. I was doing a blood-based painting. It was all dark. There he was. Sick bastard. Giggling like a child. Finger painting. With blood. I asked everyone to donate blood. Chris was just the only one willing to give it up for art. I mean, come on. Since when is having blood on your hands considered evidence? Guess I was just a little ahead of my time. I'm familiar with many avant-garde artists, some of whom work in a blood-based medium, so I can say definitively that this is not avant-garde. It's the work of a homicidal maniac. Is Lakamikis a homicidal madman? Or just a mediocre artist who was framed even better than his paintings? Each one of them wants me dead. Josh, Brad, even my own baby brother. After Chris was declared dead, I should have been able to mourn. But instead I had to, you know, deal with his bank account, uh, accept all the money from his life insurance policy take over Loop Troop and finally run it like I always wanted. It was so hard. But the recorded phone calls from the law firm tell a different story. So this will is still in effect if he goes missing, right? Yep. And if he's murdered? Murdered, maimed, tortured, you got it. Oh, okay, that's perfect. No, no, thank you so much. Tradecraft Capital Industries is one of the most corrupt and unethical conglomerate corporations on the planet. They have stakes in all of the worst industries. Mass agriculture, deforestation, mass farming. A lot of people wanted my brother dead. The National Association for the Elderly. The Broadway League. The Jam Band Fish. And of course Brad wanted him dead. And you know, I always kind of suspected Josh might have had something to do with it. He was obsessed with Chris's guitar. Chris's guitar? Oh, yeah, it was, uh, it was beautiful, all right. All black, American-made, Fender Stratocaster, everything one could want. What happened to the guitar? Well, I nearly had it. It was so close, it was almost mine, but the bastard must have taken it with him. Who? Chris. Taken it with him where? Uh, to heaven? Was San Diego the backstage stabber? Or was Thomas McMacklin the backstage stabber? Or was the motive something much more sinister? They're going to keep me alive. I know that sounds flippin' crazy, but they're cannibals. When they're through with me, there won't be a body left to find. Is there no body because McMacklin was eaten alive? Or is that just what McMacklin wanted us to believe? Chris McMacklin wasn't just a common criminal. Nope. He was a mastermind. Could he have faked his own death? <laughs> well, 
If you were wanted for a slew of crimes in six states, wouldn't you?